so the symmetric and alternating groups we learned about symmetric groups before but in this section we will introduce uh, some convenient notation for permutations and we will learn uh, uh, about some important subgroup of the SN so let us start uh, in here so let me rewrite uh, that it denotes a permutation we will call it uh, a cycle it's called the cycle this part in here let me write it here so we will assume a1 goes uh, okay we will write the following thing a1 a2 a1 goes to a2 a2 goes to a3 a3 goes to a4 and we keep writing till we reach a n and this is a n minus 2 okay so what do I mean in here I mean uh, a permutation we will use that to write a permutation it consists of numbers a i each a i uh, is a number of these one two three all the way to n so in this cycle we call it a cycle we are listing numbers from one to n some of them will appear some of them will not and we'll see that and what we mean here we will send a1 goes to a2 the image of a1 is a2 the image of a2 is a3 the image of a3 is a4 so on the image of a n minus 2 is n minus 1 the image of a n minus 1 is a n and the image of a n goes to back to be a1 so what do we mean by doing so actually we will use this notation to write uh, elements of sn for instance let us assume we have the permutation 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 this is a permutation from s6 and assume 1 goes to 3 2 goes to 5 3 goes to 6 4 goes to 1 5 goes to 2 and 6 goes to 4 okay we will rewrite that using this notation here as a cycle the following way we start with one we start with this element here one goes to three so i will write three here we go so one goes to three and here we go one goes to three again three goes to six okay here we go three goes to six so one ended up in three then i start with the three where three goes to six then i will write six after that now i will see where six goes to six goes to four so i will write four okay now where four goes to four goes to one so i will let four goes to one and where one go one goes to three okay uh, no six four goes to uh, one goes to three three goes to six six goes to four and then uh, four, four goes to one and then uh, I did not mean it that way we closed it now uh, I did not I did not pay attention uh, to this uh, because we will 4 goes to 1 so I will end that I can continue so I don't have to write one again I, w I wanted to introduce this as a second step this example a second step but I did not pay attention that 2 is going to 5 and 5 is going to 2 so I will make another cycle for that 2 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 2 anyway we will be uh, taking this example so here we go 
So this is a product of two cycles. I wanted an example where I get uh, one cycle only. So uh, let's try uh, another example. One goes to three. Th uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, this is in a six. And I will assume one goes to three, uh, or I ch can change it. One goes to five. Uh, three uh, two goes to three three goes to four four goes to one and uh, five goes to six and six goes to two okay so let's try let's try it this in uh, notations in cycle notations again now one goes to five here we go 1 goes to 5 and then 5 goes to 6 6 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 4 4 goes to 1 so we close it okay so that's what happened uh, 4 goes to 1 1 goes to 5 5 goes to 6 6 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 and uh, here we go and then 4 goes to 1 which is here so this is the cycle notation now if we go back to the above example what happened we had two cycles why because I will do it in green here 2 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 2 so this part has took a cycle by its own so a permutation might be written using two cycles not only one cycle okay I would like to make another example to get used uh, it is important to get used to that notation and I will write a permutation that contains uh, more than two cycles and let's assume we have a permutation inside Uh, S9 okay I will let one goes to uh, okay 3 4 7 I will choose one here five nine six okay good now let's see what happened in red one goes to three three goes to seven and then seven goes back to one one goes to three three to seven and then seven goes to one so I will write this one goes to three three goes to seven and then I will close uh, the cycle okay so this is what happened with me I did not want to start with such example, but anyway, we will be taking it with the example we started with. Okay, now let's use another color. Goes two goes to four, four goes to eight, and eight goes to two. Okay, two goes to four, four goes to eight, and eight goes to two. Okay, now what's about five? Five goes to itself, so I can write it this way. Okay, let's see. 6 going to 9 and 9 going to 6 so I will have 6 going to 9 and 9 going to 6 so we are done we may not write this by its own so we may repeat writing this permutation as a product of these cycles 2 4 8 and then 6 9 now if we look here we don't find 5 when we don't find a number and we know that we'll, we live in some n here and some number uh, is not appearing that means the number goes to itself the number goes to itself okay okay good so these are the uh, this is the notation writing permutations as cycles and we will say that a cycle will have a length a length k okay if it has k elements 
okay and we uh, we will say it is uh, a k cycle okay so the length of this cycle here has length what six element this cycle here has length four okay and this cycle here which we will call transposition later has length two okay and uh, the cycles uh, in the example to to this side has links three three and two okay so see this is the idea of uh, the new uh, okay this is the idea of new notation so you may write it as this way or the way you want the so the identity it, it is just one cycle one uh, link cycle any one of these can be considered as identity now using these notations this is the identity which is represented by one so uh, you know the permutations of s3 are all of these and now here two two goes to three and three goes to two one goes to itself so one does not appear two goes to itself here but one goes to three and three goes to one here one goes to two two goes to one and three goes to three so three does not appear here one goes to two two goes to three and three goes to one and same thing for here. so we got s3 represented in a new notations what you need to do is to rewrite s4 using this notation and you have uh, all the elements in S4 in one of the nodes that we already have okay how we multiply uh, uh, permutations using uh, this notation so it is we know how to multiply this we start here one goes to two and then one goes to one and so sorry one goes to two and then two goes to four and so one goes to four so we'll do it this way one goes to two here and then we move where two is it is here then two goes to four and then we got one goes to four again we ended up with four okay so we go to four here four goes to three and then we go to three three goes to two so 4 will go to 2 so now we ended at 2 so we go here 2 goes to 4 okay and then move to this cycle 4 goes to 3 and therefore 2 goes to 3 okay so let us do another uh, cycle multiplication I will assume that we are in S9 and uh, we will multiply the following okay okay so let's do the multiplication we start with 2 2 goes to 6 sorry and then uh, where, where did uh, these are <laughs> I chose uh, disjoint permutations okay <laughs> let's go for it so this is supposed to be a little after this okay where does 6 go to here we look for 6 where is 6 we don't find it so uh, please so let's do the multiplication we start with 2 2 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 3 so we get 2 goes to 3 now we start at 3 where is 3 3 goes to 4 and then 4 goes to 1 
so we got uh, three going to one okay now one going to two uh-huh and where is two here we don't see it because it goes to itself here two goes to itself in this cycle so one goes to two and goes to two goes to itself so one goes to two so we close that okay so let's keep working now we got one two and uh, three in here we will look uh, for four let's say four goes to eight and then eight goes to four wow so four goes to itself okay good let's go to five five goes to six and six goes to eight so five goes to eight where's eight eight goes to nine and nine goes to itself so eight goes to nine oops okay i shall not uh, close it now we shall wait okay now nine goes to one and one goes to seven so nine goes to seven okay where's seven here we don't see it so seven goes to itself in here and seven goes to seven in here let me write it this way seven goes to seven and then seven goes to five here we go now at five five goes to six and then six goes to eight okay we have five here good so we are done so we have five here so i should not write that five uh, seven goes to five it means here we go seven goes to five so i close the parentheses and then we may rewrite that as 2 goes to 3 goes to 1, 5 goes to 8, uh, 8 goes to 9, and uh, 9 goes to 7. Okay? So this is the way of multiplication. Now, two cycles are called disjoint if they have no element in common, like these ones here. They are called disjoint. Okay? And... Uh, if we multiply this joint cycles we get uh, uh, actually nothing we get them back this, this is the example I have already uh, wrote and uh, uh, I postponed so if I remember that example we said uh, in uh, S9 we have 1 going to 7 7 going to 3 uh, to 5 and we have uh, let, let me try to remember maybe maybe something like that and then 4 going to 6 6 going to 8 and then 8 going to 9 now what happened if I multiply these disjoint disjoint cycles so we will say that cycles are disjoint if there is no number in common like these ones what happened if I multiply them I actually get nothing they stay as they are now 4 goes to 6, but 6 here goes to itself, so I get 4 goes to 6, okay. Now 6 goes to 8, but 8 here goes to itself, so 6 goes to 8. 8 goes to 9, but 9 goes to itself, so 8 goes to 9. Now 9 goes to 4, and 4 goes to itself here, so I get 9 going to 4, but 4 is here already, so I will close that. Good. So what numbers are left from 1 to 9? 1 to 9 is uh, 1. Okay, let's see. Here 1 goes to itself. And here was 1 is going to 7. So 1 will go to 7. Now, here 7 goes to itself. And 7 goes to 5. Here 5 goes to itself. And here 5 goes to 3. And in here 3 goes to itself. And 3 goes to 2. And here again, 2 goes to itself and 2 goes to 1. And this is 1 in here. So what I got, the same two cycles, they are repeated, but the order is changed. So like we, we did no multiplication. This is the example I, I just uh, started with. Uh, it, it does no multiplication actually. So when the two cycles are disjoint, they they compute when they when we multiply them uh, 
they compute uh, disjoint let me write that disjoint cycles commute under multiplication and we here we mean by multiplication composition And this is multiplication of disjoint cycles again. Uh, these are not very disjoint, no. So what's happening here? Okay, no, ju this is just multiplication. So let's go for it. One goes to two, and two goes to four. So we get one goes to four. Okay, now, so we'll look, uh, we'll start at four again. Four goes to three, and and uh, four goes to th uh, three, of, um, four goes to three, and three goes to where? to 2 so 4 goes to 2 uh, again now we go to 2 go 2 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 3 and therefore 2 goes to 3 now we look for 3 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to itself so 3 goes to 1 and then we are done and now I will leave that uh, for you to do now notice here this example says this uh, cycle multiplied by this let me write them here it is 2, 4, 3, multiplied by 1, 2, 4, 3. Now, do the multiplication here of the same two cycles, but change the order. 1, 2, 4, 3, and 2, 4, 3. So what we got, they are not equal. Now, we changed the order of the cycles and then we got them uh, not equal so they don't compute that's what I'm saying this is in green we change the order of the cycles and then the result is not the same so if the cycles are not uh, d disjoint then they do not compute commute with each other they may or may not it's not necessary necessarily that they don't but in general we don't we do not guarantee now in here look we have two cycles but they are disjoint if we multiply and change the order we still get the same result which is one goes to three and three goes to one it's the same it's in here look in here one goes to three three goes to one and two goes to five five goes to four and six goes to two so I got I, I got nothing like these cycles will do do nothing new, okay? So it, they are the same. It's still in here, okay? So I got uh, no new cycle, just repeating the two cycles and changing the order. So they compute, commute. Now this is illustrated in the following theorem. It says when we multiply these joint cycles, then they commute. In here, if we have sigma and tau disjoint cycles then tau sigma times tau is the same as tau times sigma and uh, what is the proof of that so it is the proof is very uh, very direct very trivial if we start with sigma tau that this is sigma tau uh, and it is a1 a2 all the way to a k and then uh, tau b1 b2 all the way to br now how we do the multiplication we learned that we start with b1 b1 goes to b2 but where where does b2 go here b2 does not live here they are disjoint so b2 goes to b2 so b1 will goes to b2 now again b2 goes to b3 but where is b3 in here it does not appear that means b3 goes to itself okay and same thing will be repeated till we get uh, that and this is tau times sigma okay sigma tau is tau sigma when these permutations have no nothing have nothing in common if they have one number of common they may not commute okay like let's let's see that and as an example 
uh, let's work in S7 and let's have 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 2 and good 2 goes to 1 and then we have left uh, 3 goes to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 goes to 7 and uh, 7 goes to 1 and 1 goes to uh, let me say here let me say 4 okay these are not disjoint cycles because 4 lives in here and lives in here and uh, compute and see if we change the order if we say that what happens are they equal or not so only there's only one element in common and uh, I expect this to be uh, not equal so try that okay in here we are saying that it is not true every permutation is a cycle we have seen a permutation which is a product of three cycles so permutations are not cycles okay it is not true that permuta every permutation is a cycle but every permutation can be uh, expressed as a product of disjoint cycles so in here it, it is just the example I accidentally started with such an example at the beginning and we already have seen that so this permutation can be written uh, as two disjoint cycles as you as you have seen before and then you can you can confirm this quality by your own and let us see here uh, in general we can write every permutation every permutation in SN uh, can be written as a disjoint cycle okay and uh, what is the proof for that theorem it is one of the exercises uh, it has three parts reading that exercise make you think uh, the proof is difficult no the proof is very uh, intuitive uh, assume we have a permutation assume we have a permutations uh, I don't want to, to write a cycle I want to write the form of permutation okay so in here I will demonstrate what the exercise exercise number 24 suggests uh, for uh, as a proof for this theorem uh, you know in a permutation we used to make the list 1, go, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 uh, and then we fill some numbers here okay we don't necessarily uh, have to list them in uh, this this way we can we can change the order of these elements also it is simpler to keep them this way but we, a, permutation, a permutation does not have be necessarily represented this way so we will assume that we have some number a1 and then a1 goes to some integer all right call it a2 good now look for where a2 comes here in somewhere it is somewhere there and it goes to some other number called a3 okay it might happen that a2 goes to itself and then we have a1 goes to a2 uh, uh, a1 goes to a2 and a2 goes to a2 which means a1 goes to a2 and then we are done then we get a cycle but let's assume uh, the general way now look uh, for a3 and then a3 goes to some number a4 uh, and then this cycle must close at some point maybe at some a uh, maybe a, a, this is a demonstration of the proof let's assume a4 goes to a1 then we got a1 goes to a2 a2 goes to a3 a3 goes to a4 and a4 goes to a1 but now some numbers are less left behind here see one of the numbers is b1 and then we will see b1 goes to some other number we call b2, b2 and then we look for b2 somewhere maybe here b2 and goes to some other number that we call b3 and maybe b3 lives somewhere here and goes to other number which which might be uh, b1 again it has has to, to close at some point so b1 goes to b2 and b2 goes to b3 and b3 goes to b1 
now if some numbers are left here we go to them and call it c1 and go to some other number call it c2 and then look for c2 and goes to c3 and so on and so on and then you make the cycle of the of the, the c's now if some other numbers are left call them d1 and d2 and so on and then you will get another cycle in here till you finish all the numbers in here and nothing is left behind okay so this is the idea of the proof uh, you're not required to 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 read that exercise or to write down for that proof i will just leave it to you so uh, the important thing here is the theorem which says every permutation in sn can be written as a product of uh, cycles disjoint cycles okay Okay, so every permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. Now, what is the order of a permutation that written as a product of disjoint cycles? We're saying that it is the least common multiple of the length of the disjoint cycles. Maybe we should mention already that the order of a cycle a1 a2 all the way and this is not a we're not supposed to have a comma here all the way to a k the order of that cycle is k which means if we denote the cycle by sigma then we mean sigma to power k must give us the identity sigma to power k must give the identity okay so if we have a permutation written as a product of disjoint cycles then the order of that permutation is the least common multiple of the order of the cycles and the order of the cycle is the same as its length you see here the cycle has length equals k and we are saying the order is k so given a permutation write it as disjoint cycles and then look at the length of each of the cycles and take the least common multiple of this length then that gives you the order of the cycle itself this is demonstrated here tau equals this cycle times this times that so the length here is 2 the length here is 2 the length here is 3 so we will take the least common multiple of these which comes out to be 6 so the order of tau is 6 and now if we check that this is tau squared I can now you need to get used to do the per, uh, multiplication so quick one goes to two and go to two goes to it uh, one goes to two and two goes to one so one goes to two two goes to one so one goes to itself again two goes to one and one goes to two two goes to itself okay three goes to four and four goes to three so three goes to three 4 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 4 so they did not they don't appear now 5 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 7 so 5 goes to 7 7 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 6 so 7 goes to 6 and now 6 goes to 7 and 7 goes to 5 and then we get 5 goes 6 goes to 5 and then we get tau square for quick Okay. now to obtain tau to power 3 multiply this tau, tau square uh, with with tau so tau is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and tau square is 5 6 7 
Now do the multiplication. Okay, uh, tau square is 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 five seven six. Sorry, do the multiplication. Actually, you will be multiplying these uh, together, and you will get the identity. See that five goes to six, and six goes to five. Okay, six goes to seven, seven goes to six, five goes uh, seven goes to five, and five goes to seven. So multiplying this give us the identity. So these two things are left behind. Now tau to power four, multiply this with tau again. You get tau to power four, and once you get it, multiply it by tau to get tau to power five. And you need to do all of that, and then multiply this last one tau to power five by tau, and then we get one. We get the identity, and this is the least power that took tau to the identity. So it is the order of tau, and we could get it at the beginning using the above uh, theorem there okay now how the proof of that theorem actually in a previous exercise in a previous exercise uh, you know that uh, if we have two elements a b belongs to g with a b equals b a uh, then uh, we prove that uh, the order of did we prove that the order of a times b is the least common multiple of order a no we did not prove it and order b so this is a good exercise for you to do okay now if a permutation sigma is written using cycles a1 a2 this is not a comma a k times b1 b2 br times c1 c2 cs and then let's assume just we have three of them now the order of this is s the order of this is r and the order of this cycle is k and now these are three elements that we are multiplying with each other multiplying them all together and then the order will be the least common multiple of these integers k r and s so this is a generalization in here so I, I used two elements in here to demonstrate that we can just think about it to multiply these two together and then the order will be least common multiple of k and r this is goes for a in here and then take that for b so, so this is not necessarily a proof this is only to give you an idea about the proof and you are not required to write it down and you will not be asked about it okay just this is an idea of the proof and it is actually in the exercises okay the alternating groove now we are done with uh, properties and notations in SN and we will uh, define what we mean by alternating groups we have seen cycles that has length 2 and such a cycle we will call transpositions like 1 to 2 it is a transposition 1 to 4 transposition 3 to 5 transposition any one of these okay now a transposition take uh, this form and uh, if you multiply it with itself a goes to B and then B goes to A so A is go to A B goes to A and A goes to B so B goes to B so we get the identity that means every transposition is is it is is its own inverse okay if we multiply 3 4 3 4 we get the identity okay now what about the if we have a permutation which is written using transpositions not necessarily this joint the inverse of such a permutation if we call sigma and this is sigma inverse it is just reordering the transposition in reverse order so this one came to be the last now it is at the beginning this one came to be at the beginning now it is at the last and 
which reverse the order of these ones too. And to make sure, let's multiply. If we multiply them here, we get the identity for that part. After we get the identity, we get nothing to apply here. So 1 times 4 and 1 times 4, we get that here. So we get the identity, it disappears. Now, this comes to be the identity. And again, this is the identity. So the inverse, uh, when we have a permutation written as a product of transpositions, the inverse is just to reverse the order of these transpositions. Okay. And here is in general, uh, if sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma n minus 1 are all transpositions to sigma n. Now, if you multiply them and take the inverse, just reorder them. The last one comes to be the first one. The one before it comes to be the one after it, and so on. Okay? Now, let's see what's happening in here. Notice this permutation. We will write it as a product of transposition. 1 goes to 2 in here. And then again, we'll start with 1 goes to 3. Sorry, 2 goes to 3. That's bad. 2 goes to 3. And here we go. And 3 goes to 4. So, we wrote this permutation as a product of transpositions okay we can do same thing in here one goes to two and then goes to two goes to three and then we are done in general we can do that one goes to two and then two goes to three and so on a k minus one goes to a k so one goes to a a two a one goes to a two a two goes to a three a k minus one goes to a k and so on. Now what happens if you multiply these? We get this back. Okay? Uh, multiplication we start from here. Okay. Okay. Remember when we multiply we start from uh, we, we start with transpositions that comes to to the right okay so remember this uh, every every permutation can be written as a product of transpositions and according to this theorem we will define a permutation to be even if it can be written as a product of an even number of permutation and would be called odd if it can be written as a product of odd number of permutation for example this is an even permutation why we wrote it as a product of transpositions I, I should say it is called even if it is if it can be written as a product of even number of transpositions odd would be called odd if it is can be written as a product of odd number of transpositions and if we look at this one this is odd why because writing this as transposition is 1 2 2 4 4 3 okay it's it, uh, sorry was one uh, okay we need to multiply it first okay so this goes to, um, Okay, I will let you do the multiplication, just make sure. Now, all this permutation, if you multiply it and then uh, do the multiple, let's see, let's multiply it. 2 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, so go 2 goes to 3. 3 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 4, here we go. 4 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2 and then we are done. And uh, what's left? 2 goes to 4. Uh, and then uh, 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 1, sorry, okay. And now rewrite that, we will get 2 goes to 3, 4 goes, 3 goes to 4, 3 and 4, and then 4 and 1, which is the same as 1 and 4. So we have three transpositions, so we'll call this to be odd, uh, permutation
Okay. The identity permutation in SN is even. Simply we can write the identity as product of 1, uh, 2, 1, 2. And this gives the identity, right? So we could write it in uh, as a product of two transpositions. Therefore, it is even. Now, here it says, but it is not odd. So we are worrying that the identity can be written as a product of odd a number uh, odd number of transpositions and the answer is no this is not true and to prove that uh, the proof here will be actually long I will not go over it uh, and if you like uh, you may art, you might read it from the book Okay, now what's about even permutations? So if we have Sn, uh, Sn is the, the group of permutation of an element, then it says that no permutation can be even and odd at the same time. It is either even or it is odd. It is either even or it is odd. Uh, let us assume that an alpha to prove this assume that we have a permutation alpha belong to us and so this is alpha which is written as a product of odd number of transpositions k this is k and again assume alpha is written as a number of as a product of a number of even transpositions now what happened if we assume that now each one of the sigmas and the tau is transposition now the identity is alpha times alpha inverse but this is alpha okay and this is alpha again what is alpha inverse we already said that alpha inverse just rewrite these permutations here transposition in reverse order so we have tau r tau r minus 1 all the way till we reach tau 2 and then tau 1 and here it is now what we got we wrote the identity as k plus r transpositions so we have k transpositions here and r transpositions here so the identity is written as k plus r transpositions but k plus r is odd since k is odd and r is even so we could write the identity as a product of odd number of transposition and this is a contradiction we have just seen in the theorem before which says the identity permutation is even it is not odd permutation so we have a contradiction here so we cannot what caused the contradiction we assume that some permutation alpha can be written as even permutation or as odd permutation and then we got a contradiction that means no permutation is even and odd at the same time it is either even or odd and this is what theorem 7.28 says uh, every permutation is either even or odd but not both okay now we go to sn and collect all the permutations that are even these together this set makes a group and it is called the alternating group of degree n so the set the set of all even permutations in sn donated donated denoted sorry a n a sub n is called the alternating group of order n okay and uh, let's assume uh, let's uh, prove a n is a subgroup indeed of sn and the uh, proof goes the following way we need to uh, to prove a set is a subgroup we need to prove it is a closed under multiplication and every element has its inverse in there so if we choose alpha and beta in a n that means each of alpha and beta can be written as a product of even number of transpositions 
So alpha is sigma 1 all the way to sigma k, where k is even, beta is tau 1 all the way to tau r, where r is even. Now multiply them, and then you get them organized this way. And this is uh, a number of k plus r transpositions, which is even. So alpha times beta could be written as a product of even number of transpositions, and therefore alpha times beta is even. So it belongs to an. Now, if we have alpha to be as here, then the inverse we said is just a reordering of transpositions. So the inverse is this, and it's, it is still a product of even number of transpositions. So f inverse is still there. Now, this says in here, uh, I did not read that part, which is in here. It says the order how many tra even transpositions there are, we say it is n factorial. n factorial is the order of Sn divided by 2. So An makes half of Sn. So Sn is divided in two parts. An, the even permutations, and the odd permutation. Every permutation is either odd or even. So Sn consists of even permutation, union, odd permutation, and the intersection is phi. So we want to prove that a n and b n has the same number of elements, okay? And therefore, s n will be divided. Say this is s n will be divided in two equal uh, parts, equal uh, two parts that has the same number of elements, which is the a n. And the BN, AN is the set of even, the subgroup of even permutations, and PN is the set of odd permutation. It is not a subgroup. Why it is not subgroup? Because the identity is not there. The identity, the identity, does not belong to BN. So this is not a subgroup of Sn. Okay, now to prove this quality is true, we need to show that as I said, An and Bn has the same cardinality. And then they split Sn in two equal halves. Okay? How to prove that two sets have the same cardinality? Whenever they finite. And this is left to be done in exercise number 24. And it is simply just define the map from a n to b n, which is 1 to 1 and 1 2. And these two sets are finite. Then they must have the same number of elements. And the map takes an element of a n, which is alpha, and multiply it by 1 2 by this transposition. So a n alpha, it is from a n. So it can be written as a product of even number of transposition. Now multiply it with transposition 1, 2. So we got even number of transposition. And one more, which is 1, 2. So the result is odd number of, of transposition. So the result lives inside Bn. Where Bn here denotes the, uh, the odd permutations. And prove this is uh, injective. It's very easy. Use constellation. And to prove it is uh, surjective. It is easy uh, also. Okay. Okay. Uh, it prove it is uh, surjective. So choose any odd permutation in here and prove you can uh, find some permutation here which you multiply by 1, 2, and then you get back the odd permutation uh, Pn. And there is a, a hint in the book for it. So F is bijective. And that means what we wanted. They have the same number of elements. And we said that every permutation, every permutation is either it odd or even. And we prove that no permutation is odd and even at the same time. So their intersection is phi. Their union is Sn and their intersection is phi. And they have the same cardinality. That means the cardinality if we, if, of each one of them must be uh, uh, I will write them here. The cardinality of each one of them must be half of the number of the elements inside 
uh, half of the number of elements inside uh, Sn, which is n factorial divided by 2. And here, uh, just a list of A3, go to S3 and pick out the elements that uh, the permutation that are even, and you find only these three. And you have uh, S4 listed in one of the nodes, and then go to find what is a 4 and uh, it shall consist of uh, uh, 4 factorial over 2 that means it has 12 elements including the identity and this is the end of our lecture